morning, it's Sand Raiders day five and stage five as well. Yesterday was that nice rest day and all was good. It was really nice having a rest day and the uh, heat just went up and up and up. Um, yeah, I'm, unfortunately we're now a team of three. We started out as five on day one, uh, but Lance had it up and we had to hit those riverbeds that he needed no, no more. And John, um, who injured his arm on stage three, wasn't it? It's getting very bruised and he's, he's not riding anymore. He's flying back to the UK just to check it out. It's not broken, but it doesn't look, looks a bit ugly. So yeah, it's me versus the young guns of Charlie and Oscar uh, from now on. Fortunately, the next stage is 250 kilometers, I'm told. Pretty easy, 30 kilometers of road, 180 in beast. Six in the end, if that adds up, it might be 150 of beast. And there's a huge area of desert, 35 kilometers, dead straight. But it was a big warning because there's undulations in it, and they had their worst accident on Sand Raiders some years ago on this very beach. Do you think it's big, wide open? There was um, a group of French lads all in a line, suddenly hit the undulation at that speed, tumbled, and lots of injuries. So they're giving us a warning on that. Uh, heat is 36, 37 degrees today. I've looked round my bike actually, we ought to just have a look at my bike, it's very noisy because everybody's starting up but I just want to point out a couple of things, I've got some niggles on the bike now. We thought the tank was okay, it was in the UK, but I'm just noticing, I think I might have a fuel leak, you just see a sort of wet patch here, and this coming off, that's sort of new, there's another fuel leak here, and I think there's a crack here, the level I mean, it's tiny amount of fuel leakage and I've got so much fuel I'm not too worried. And then the other thing was the wiring. You have these stops here, you see this metal up here, that is what does the steering wheel and some wires were getting into that. They won't be able to see. So I've cable tied it up here just to pull the wires out. It's, it's another thing, because of the heat, all the wire is sort of sort of slack and floppy and it just goes places where it didn't go in the UK but my biggest worry under here this is a dry sumped engine and you'll notice here on the oil tank it's just a bit wet and we're a bit afraid that the vibrations and the, the you know it's savage the roots whether there's a crack appearing in the oil tank and so I'm going to be keeping a massive eye out for any oil leakage here in case the oil tank is cracked then I'll lose the oil and I'll lose the engine but apart from that everything's good engine's running fine it's almost running we're off to as a call, all the bikes they're all lining up it's half past eight so we're getting a fairly early start because we just don't want to be out in the heat right filled up that was fairly chaotic but we're good to go and I've got off-road 500 meters and keep an eye out for it it says like it. Yeah, it's dust. I can see dust right down there. This is it for another 160 kilometers. doing it on a compass. This I reckon is where we're heading. Just the vastness of it. There's Charlie over there. What's he doing over there? I think this is the 35 kilometer dead straight with scattered yumps oh. it's weird just a 
amazing. Here comes Charlie. There he goes. Oh, eat that dust, Metcalf. Yeah. Size. Look at that. That was very cool, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what Sand Raiders, that gives you a taste of Dakar. That is a Dakar track they raced along. Yeah. It's not always a. Yeah, that was it. And I just saw those sort of, you know, those dunes or whatever they were coming together and I thought we must be going through the middle. No, it's very cool. I just suddenly saw it wiggling. Yeah, it was come up, wasn't it? Yeah. You've got bolts, haven't you? Good stuff. Yeah, Charlie's bike has just gone on to reserve, which is not what you want to happen around here. Uh, just looking if we can find a bottle. No, it's been rejected. I have loads of fuel, so I'm going to donate some. What fun and games. Yeah, we didn't put enough fuel in it at that fuel stop this morning. Yeah, that quality, quality fuel. Finish! Good. 
stuff. That was proper eco motoring, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Tedious. We got here. Yeah. I can't believe we didn't see a single Good morning, welcome to Sand Raiders Day 6, Day 6. We stayed in Sakura last night, we just about got back on fuel, which was great. And yeah, it was a nice hotel, pool, etc. And lots of fun was had. There's been, we had a shop though at about 10 o'clock, so now it's going to be a briefing at 7 o'clock because there are two routes today. There's a 360 kilometer route and we've said no, we're not doing that. We're doing the shorter route of 240, 250, something like that. Um, we just had a briefing, it is now, yeah, it's 9 o'clock actually. And this one is over to Mazuga where the big dunes are. We're staying in a camp tonight in, and it's just epic this camp and it looks onto the dunes. Unfortunately, within the 240 kilometers we've got to do today, there's some fresh vest, it's super fine sand. And I remember it from last year. It's the one bit that I'm, yeah, unsure about. It's not my favorite thing at all. And it goes on and on and the dust is unbelievable. Fortunately, the scenery is really good as well, but it's going to be tough. And they've also forecast it's another 36, 40 degree day. So apart from that four kilometers, I'm really looking forward to today and get into Mazuga. And I've just done a little bit of maintenance before we set off. I've put a new air filter in. I've got one in my bag. It seems silly not to use it, so I've chucked that in. And yeah, all is good. like yesterday. Complete surprise. Didn't realise that our lunch stop has an additional sort of area here where you can actually stay but there's a bit of history to our lunch stop. If you can wander into here you can see all the rallies and things that go through here. They've got some things up on the wall. Yeah. AX Africa raid. There's a lot of that goes on. There's a panda raid as well that goes through uh, this area. And this is obviously a, you know, a very good stop off, but uh, yeah, a lot of history of these places. You don't expect it when you look at the outside, but very different once you go in. Cool drink spot. Look at it. Unfortunately, it's a lot hotter today. Very good. Yeah, yeah, all good. But yeah, all sorts of history. Oh, I've got to keep up with these two young guns. going again. Get a bit of breeze. Yeah, right, off to the fresh fish. Oh, we're just going to start to see what we're going to be doing next. So the sand blows down. You look at the dust trail right in the distance over there. We have to get over this ridge of mountain. And we do it on the sand uphill slightly. Oh, here we go. Sitting on the back. Bit, 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 bit,
course. That was quite something, wasn't it? I want to go do it again. <laughs> that was good, yeah. That was quite amazing. You guys, you were coming, I didn't realise it was sand. Yeah. So as soon as I got in, I was like, shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gutted that when I got to the top, I clicked this to turn it off and I was turning it on. Okay. On the 400, I was fourth gear, absolutely flat out, off the top, <laughs> and it wouldn't pull up the hill as much as I wanted it to. No. It kicked a fifth, and it just blew it. It couldn't do it. It tapped the whole way, and it was, yeah, you need a 600 up that hill. Yeah. <laughs> the fifth quite <laughs> Yeah, no, Charlie came past me like I was standing. <laughs> But he forgot to turn the camera on, Charlie. I turned it on when I got here. You turned it on when you got here. Always a good idea when you stop. Wow, that was brilliant. Poor guy in the GS pushing his GS up. Did you see that? Couldn't turn the camera on because it was just so hard. Uh, people coming off left, right, and centre. But it, it's like talcum powder. I'm sure I can't really see. Let's get on the track, that car. Come on. There we go. We're off. me off. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, merci. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> oh, that was annoying. At least the camera was on. Time we've been having lunch. It's been all these 205s coming through. It's 205 trophy or something. We've also noticed the wind getting up over lunch. There's a bit of a sandstorm going. Good. I don't like this wind though. to meet a traffic jam in the desert.
quite nice, by the look of it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> that doesn't look like tents. That one. Well, Maury, this is the last day of Sand Raiders, and last night we stayed in this tent, tented village, if you like, and the dunes are over there, and it was spectacular this morning. And we had a really early start because we were promised if you got up ready for seven o'clock, there was a chance to follow Jordi Macaron, who this uh, Paris Dakar racer, 17 ra uh, races to his name, was going to lead out small groups into the dunes. So Charlie and Oscar, yeah. and Oscar yeah, got up. It was too early for me. It was before a morning coffee and you headed out and it was carnage to begin with, wasn't yeah. it? Well, they were sort of promising groups of seven or something yeah. like that. And half the camp turned up. Yeah, they did. <laughs> well, you look like a motocross sort of start. You yeah. all charged off here. Well, they split it. Well, they sort of were going to split us into groups of heavy yeah. bikes and lighter bikes. Yeah. Uh, and set us off separately. But that sort of didn't really happen. It was just a bit of a free for all to get to the start and yeah. charge and off. And your bike stalled or something, didn't Yeah, you? I stalled. Just, I was that classic guy on the, on the line after everyone sort of revving, ready to go. And, to kick it going, so I just sort of uh, slight on the accelerator and it just died. So, uh, it's a carnage when you first went out. Yeah, sort of kicking lines in between, sort of forward lights and struggling riders. So we got our, our, our way through and we were off and away, we got it on yeah. the plane and I'm down slightly on power and I'm just sort of Oscar charging off, so I'm just sort of sure showing off. Yeah, so it's just a charge to the front, was it? A little bit. Um, yeah, because it sort of separated quite a few people out that first sort of yeah. hundred metres. And um, yeah, just Still special. Uh, yeah. Just Geordie picking a line through the dunes and it was yeah, just, just, just carving yeah, just carving his way through. And he came back, didn't you? And you thought, I oh, know, I'll have another yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, go, I'll go with the heavy bikes. Look, I've got a big yeah. tank. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm really heavy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, Pep sort of he, know, put stops on that. There yeah, he played headmaster, didn't he? Yeah. I saw him doing this. Yeah. Asking for your keys. Yeah. <laughs> so Oscar and I were sort of banned from going back out again. But then they all charged off, and I don't know, maybe two minutes later, Joanne was behind us. And yeah. Said, you guys want to go? And we were like, yeah. We want to head out there. So then we did. Uh, charged off, but I got stuck behind some Land Cruisers. And it was. Yeah. It felt a bit dangerous, to be honest, because they were going up dunes and sort of slipping their way down and I didn't really want to go past them because it was just a bit unpredictable yeah. where they were going to end up. Um, and yeah, I had a bit of a mishap where I sort of misjudged a line and ended up yeah. into, a, into a bit of a, on the edge of a bowl. Yeah. And I just couldn't get the bloody thing out. Um, yeah. We took a photo of it as well, didn't you? I did nice. a photo. I saw that. Nice photo because it was all yeah. propped up <laughs> nicely. Yeah. And yeah, we... Um, had old LM boy. Yeah, we've been admiring this Honda, yeah, 600 LM that's been beautifully modified. Yeah, he was, he's obviously a very good rider. Very talented rider. He sort of comes running down the dune yeah. and sort of gets on my bike, uh, tries to get it going. Not didn't first time. I had to give it a kick to get it back going again. And he sort of gets on it, starts, spins it round able to ride it and it's like he's nicked my bike he's yeah, off he out the goes, dune. He off, doesn't he? I don't charge up the <laughs> dune, pop back on and away we go. So thank you very much. Yeah. He was yeah that I was very, very grateful oh, for, yeah. for doing that. Um, because yeah I would have been a bit stuffed. Yeah. But yeah, well done. Just, but then it was Geordie, Joanne, Oscar and myself riding yes. through the dunes together, the four of us, yeah. which was pretty cool to follow up. And can you spot that he's a 17 time Dakar? Yeah, he's quite handy. <laughs> <laughs> it's people. He's just made it. Basically, it looks so easy. Yeah. Yeah. 
and he's, and he's not on like a, the best bike. No, either. he's on a bit of a <laughs> shed of a bike, <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, he'd have something better, but there we are. He really trains me with it. Right, yeah. well, I'll come back here and have some breakfast and see yeah. some more guys. That was the LM guy heading back out again. Yeah. Just can't get enough. Oh, so. well, it is quite a playground. Yeah, well, you're really easy day today. It's um, yeah, 15 kilometers or something to the end, no, really, and the finish is quite nice. Yeah, yesterday well. was. Oh, yeah, well, it was it was long, but my God, we did some things yesterday, didn't we? Charging up those sand <laughs> slopes. <laughs> Gutted, I missed fish. two yeah. bits of footage that I thought really I was recording. Yeah, going GoPros up this, are like that. Yeah, going up this sort of two kilometre, couple percent incline, just absolutely kid. Like yeah. damper, just sort of taking the brunt of, of yeah. that. And just charging past you and Oscar, like you were both standing still. I've got probably got you coming past me then, because my camera was working. Oh, so really? Yeah. Fine. I've got that. But yeah. the one he wanted was yes. going to fly past Oscar, wasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Next year, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. do that. According to him, it doesn't exist. No, so, it didn't yeah. happen. <laughs> never happened. Right, well, we've got a fairly relaxing day. It's nine o'clock at the moment. Um, so we can sort of, we've only got 50, yeah, say 50 kilometres, so we're sort of an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah. Then last bit to the finish. Yeah, it's the last climb on the route. This is probably the last test. It's all on a plane to back to a food. Well, yeah, level will go in on the way back from here. Well, yeah, we came down here last year. It's quite steep. But after what we've been through, shouldn't be too bad. Pretty and some fossil cellars and an amazing view of the other side. Good. Yeah, see where Charlie is. <laughs> they must have a factory for fossils in Morocco. Hotel time. Here we go, that's where we stayed with the Ferrari. I brought the tester also out. And this is our hotel in Riyadh. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> the finish of San Raiders. What if they got the arch up? Well, that's Sand Raiders 2023 done, all seven stages, and as you can see, there's a lot of packing up already happening. It's, uh, yeah, 20 past seven, and we've got the big award ceremony tonight. So, I thought it's been a long video, this. I want to try and keep it as tight as I can, but just some conclusions on this event. Well, again, it's a fantastic event. If you're into these sort of Dakar bikes, if you're into really stretching yourself and seeing Morocco and seeing tracks and vistas and incredible sights on a bike, then I don't know there's a better event than Sand Raiders. It's tough. The feedback I got from the 15 or so Brits that entered this year after watching my video last year and some of the other guys uh, from other countries was you didn't explain just how tough it was. Well, I thought I did, but I'll say again, this is a really tough event. Dakar was a really tough event. The day, well, if you're doing 250, I think the first day was 280 kilometers and 250 kilometers plus days are quite common on this. 
They really are exhausting. And this year, temperatures, I think Oscar and he's got a temperature gauge on his bike, 42 degrees we hit on two days. So regularly high 30s, low 40s. It is absolutely exhausting. A camelback is essential. I'm very grateful to Charlie because uh, he was filling me with electric lights, etc., in the morning to get through. Uh, and my main takeaway, I think, if you're going to do this, start your prep early. It's much more fun doing it on your own bike because then you can sort of prep it and you have to start that process quite early on. Charlie bought his bike in June 22 and was prepping for that. I've had this bike for a while, but I started the restoration in October 22. And it takes that long to get it ready. They get picked up in March. It just get huge enjoyment from making your bike bespoke to Sand Raiders. And we chose these two. That Charlie's is a XR600R because the R rather than XL means you get much bigger suspension travel. It's just a racier bike, but you, the bike comes with a small tank. So Charlie then put a tank off a XL 600 LM, so he's got the capacity to do Sand Raiders. 27 litres in there. Tyres are essential. Michelin would be our choice having done this. These are Enduro tyres. They're a bit, they do wear out quite quick. I went for Michelin Tracker, that seemed to last better, but this wasn't an aggressive enough tyre. This is a Motors Tractionator. It wasn't good enough, I'll be swapping to Michelin next year. This bike I had restored by David Lambeth. It was quite an expensive job. I'll fess up now, this cost me £15,000 to do. Do not think you can just go and buy an XT 600 on eBay for two and a half thousand expect to get round. There was a beautiful XL 500 Paris Dakar edition that basically just got destroyed on this event. In the end the frame cracked and that was it but the, everything fell off. It didn't have enough suspension travel. So bike critical. Training wise well I was in full fitness mode from Christmas so four months preparation on the peloton and things and you want if you have an Apple watch it's no good being above average fitness you want to get to high fitness you want to get the top band and that will prepare you for sand raiders. I think if I had criticisms this year with so many bikes this year I wish there were more classic bikes here there's there's a little trickle of more modern 2005 2010 bikes appearing and they don't seem to be quite the classic Dakar bikes that I would expect to see on the event I'm not sure why the buggies are here as well because they just sort of complicate things when they come across you and you know John had that near miss with one when it went end over end but the positives is the backup of the mechanical uh, stations when you come back at night and en route we had that issue with John's bike and his carburetor they expect uh, to have to service at least 80% of the entrance that's how busy they are medical wise it's terrific there's three doctors on call they're in the route as well and you do need them and they were telling me that the the key problem this year was exhaustion probably heat exhaustion and also the accidents that happen tend to be near the end of the day because you've you've got you might be a good rider and you go out to Wales and you do a bit of enduro and you might go out in the morning it might be three hours here you've got to still be able to do those technical sessions after six or seven hours pounding down a track in 38 40 degrees C temperatures and that's when you know you, the fitness comes in and the electrolytes and the preparation and the bike holds together I had a count up last night just to see how many bikes actually got to the finish out. The 117 started when in Marrakesh, I counted 93 finishers. So that's the sort of attrition you get. Not all of them are injured or bikes broken, it's just a general mix. There's quite a few people said, this is too tough for me, I'm going to go by taxi and just enjoy the spirit of Dakar, but not actually ride the bike anymore. Um, so yeah, I've enjoyed Sand Raiders 2023. Charlie had an amazing time in June and with Oscar. It's great to be able to do it as a, as a group. I love the mix of people here. The fact you've got older riders, experienced riders, ex-Dakar racers, and the young generation coming through. Um, so that was Sand Raiders 2023. The award ceremony is next. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. It's pro I'm sorry it's so long, but you can understand why we've seven stages and 1600 kilometers completed. There we go, for another year. Keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon.